Yes, of course, it's a massive WTF moment. I am stood here making this video nine days after the pay-per-view happened. But as they all say, it's better to come late than to never come at all. But spaff on my tits, Michael, Gary Scott and Dwight K. Schroot have had a love child. Just imagine going all eight mile apart from the puking and the licking of the toilet bowl when asked to spell the word extreme. If he's struggling there, just imagine if Paul Heyman asked him to spell... Kranfapufgil, Gigogeric, Quindrobel, Santosilio, Gogogoch. Whoa! And let me tell you, dear viewer, I lolled, I lamoured, I ruffled all over the floor when I heard that young Michael Gary Scott and Dwight K. Schrute love child asked Paul Heyman, can you use that word in a sentence? I don't know what it means. And that's because judging on how these cards have been booked over the past few years with one different rules match per card over the past few years, you could easily replace that little boy there with that old man there. Vince McMahon didn't have a clue. Clearly this year we got a full card full of extreme rules. <laughs> Time to play the game and all that stuff there. And at this point of the show with the white rabbit going through a gate into the upside down and getting blown up, I was thinking to myself, oh well, Bray Wyatt is dead and or part of Vecna and now the upside down will seep into the WWE universe. Instead of saying wowie yowie or whatever Bray Wyatt used to say, I'm saying shamey wamey. Yes, we've got to make a massive WTF moment out of the Miz rocking up two extreme rules and expecting Triple to stop Dexter Loomis from going to the Mrs. Birthday Party, which happened on the Raw after Extreme Rules. Mizzles, if Triple H was going to stop that man going to your birthday party, he would have done it long before the day before that party was going to take place. You know, when he abducted you, or you know, when he, he snuck into your house while your kids were in the house as well, or you know, when he choked you out all of those times. The Miz being at Extreme Rules to speak to Triple H is a lie and therefore a WTF moment dear viewer. The real reason the Miz was at Extreme Rules was to fondle the bollocks of and frolic with the honey monster from Sugar Puffs, but the one who likes orange soda too much. Just imagine now, you live Morgan. Oh, you bring a massive bat down to the ring because you know if you go toe to toe with Ronda Rousey without a bat, she's going to batter you. And with all that in mind, for some reason, you leave your massive bat in the corner of the ring because presumably you're a kinky bitch who likes getting beaten up by Ronda Rousey. Dominic Mysterio is a menace and his sheer presence brings out the kinky in all of us. He needs to be stopped. Mago, 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 Mago. Yes, Mago Cole claiming that the first Extreme Rules match took place in the year of 2010 is one of the weirdest and most ridiculous things to ever come out that man's mouth on the air. And yes, that man once spoke about Jerry Lawler's arsehole bleeding blood out of it. I know it might be by title, Mago Cole, but bloody hell, man, smack my arse and call me Gertrude. It's just a no disqualification match, isn't it? You're going all Marks and Spencers on our asses, and that's never a good thing. This isn't just any no disqualification match, this is an Extreme Rules match. Shut up, man, and put it in the bin, will you? Now I get it, everybody. Before I say the next WTF moment, I've just got to say I get it. I understand that Ronda James Cuthbert Rousey can't take that bat and swing to the beaches making contact with Liv Morgan legitimately and as hard as she possibly can. Otherwise, Liv Morgan would be dead Morgan. But I've got to make a WTF moment out of most, if not all, of those weaponry shots in that match between Liv Morgan Morgan and Ronda James Cuthbert Rousey because it looks like they would not have left an imprint on a fresh path of lovely soft snow. That's how soft they were hitting. How air man lasses? It's extreme rules, not foreplay. Bloody hell, Dominic's making me all kinky now. Anyway, lasses, there's got to be a different way. Honorary WTF moment for WWE booking an extreme rules match because they are always crap. Strap match, might as well call it crap match. What a... Uh, mm. And now I have a message for the brawling brutes, for Bianca Belair, for Ronda Rousey, for Finn Balor and for Matt Riddle. You all wasted so much time while winning your matches at Extreme Rules. Yes, it's a WTF moment that you all didn't do what Scarlett Bordeaux did. You should have just whapped out the pepper spray. What rules did she break there? None of them. Although she did let her man get the piss beat out of him for a very long time when she could have used that pepper spray very early in that match indeed and achieved the same result. And I think it's a huge WTF moment 
moment as well because we've heard Michael Cole on SmackDown over the past couple of weeks saying that Scarlett Bordeaux, she's a clairvoyant, she's mystical, she's magical. We've seen her produce fire from her bare hands, but no pepper spray. That's the answer. Mystical bollocks gone, pepper spray is the answer. And we've got to say fair play to John Cena for lending his goggles to Scarlett Bordeaux because after using the entire bastard can of pepper spray right in Drew McIntyre's eyes, she didn't get affected one bit. Karrion Cross was like, oh, I'm a bit blind here. But Scarlett Bordeaux, she was completely fine. And that's because she was wearing John Cena's goggles. You cannot see them. Wabba pepper spray. And never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would see Scarlett Bordeaux with my eyes. But here's Seth Rollins with my ears. Go back and watch that little bit of canoodling. <laughs> Dominic, what are you doing to me? That little bit of hugging on the ramp, and this is what you'll hear. <laughs> and during Bailey's entrance, we all heard Michael Cole say Sasha Banks, and yes, we all did the DiCaprio, didn't we? This is like the fourth time I've tried to say this. We're going to roll with it. We tried to do the DiCaprio. Oh my God, I can't do it. We all tried to do the D D DiCaprio. What's wrong with my... We all tried to do the DiCaprio. Whoa, you know what I mean, don't you? And then we're in the midst of that ding dong battle to end them all as they used to say on Pro Evolution. It ties in with Bailey because a ding dong hello. What a lovely segue reference link. I don't know what I'm saying anymore, but we all hear Maggle Cole say that lady's face. It sums it all up. Oh my God, I left the oven on and didn't lock the front doors. And I think I put my pants. And then for some reason, we see some random fan cam footage splicey spliced into the show. And down your drinks, everybody, a big return is happening at Extreme Rules 2022. Let me tell you, that bunny there means one thing, and that means Adam Rose came back at Extreme Rules. Ah, <laughs> yes. Shinsuke Nakamura. Fair play to that security guard there for bending his spine the wrong way in order to either get out the shot and or pay homage to the King of Strong Style. There is no coinky dink everybody that's someone who did not used to shop at a BDSM shop who is now best friends with Dominic Mysterious now clearly shops at a BDSM shop. Finn Balor, you kinky bastard. I bet he tried to stick that pickled head up Damien Priest's ass. I always have to ruin these videos, don't I? Now, if you closed your eyes during that Finn Balor versus Edge I Quit matchup, you would have been wonderfully mistaken to think to yourself, bloody hell, they're using the audio from Edge's live sex celebration on Raw with Lita way back in the day. Oof, stop it. Oh, ah, don't quit. Oh, oh, go, oh, oh. Now, here's a shocking revelation for everybody. I don't know UFC. I'm much more well-versed in a different MMA discipline called KFC. It's finger licking good, let me tell you. But after Seth Rollins did his stomp to Matt Riddle, why the hell did Daniel Cormier take like half an hour to start his 10 count. Both commentators called Cormier out for this bollocks, so I guess I must do too, even though I don't fully understand what the hell's going on. Just someone give me a damn bucket, will ya? And then with Riddle getting the win, the little thing in the corner appeared, and that was the end of the show. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh no, wait. I can see why Bray White kept ripping up Ramblin' Rabbit into little pieces, because when that prick is whole, he's absolutely horrifying. Yes, everyone, it's the worst kept secret since Santa Claus actually turned out to be your mother's secret lover. But yes, Bray Wyatt is back in WWE. And I'm like, wow, wow, wee, wow, that's very nice. Initially, it looked like this Wyatt Six thing we've been hearing about was going to be Huskus the Pig Boy, Mercy the Buzzard, Rambling Rabbit, Abby the Witch, the Fiend, and Bray Wyatt himself. But for the first time in six and a half years of doing this bollocks on the YouTube machine, I'm coming to you, having seen the follow-up to the happening at the pay-per-view. So now I'm asking the question, is the Wyatt Six, all the characters, I don't want to do my hands now, all the characters Bray Wyatt has played down the years with this new masked fellow, who is allegedly going to be known as Uncle Howdy. There's also going to be an Uncle Harper character thrown there somehow as well. How are these going to work? I don't know. Let me know down there. Are these two fellows or one fellow going to control and manipulate this new Bray Wyatt we saw on SmackDown and play this Bray Wyatt we saw on SmackDown off and against his former cells, against his will, whether he wants to or not. The inner turmoil, it's so muddy, everybody. You see a version that is as close to Wind and Rotunda that we have ever seen appear
appeared on SmackDown last week to basically say thank you to the fans, something his old gimmicks didn't allow him to do on the air. He's talking about losing his self-confidence, two people close to him, his career. He's grateful. He's nervous. We're seeing this version of him we've never got to meet before. The genuine him. But then he's cut off by the mask saying things like, come with me, your life is done. You've got no idea who you're dealing with, but you will soon. That kind of stuff. The fact that Bray was wearing that mask when he returned at Extreme Rules, that leaves me asking how many questions. I don't know. How does that mask fit into controlling him, but also him wearing the mask? I don't know. I don't... Oh. But yes, that mask being on his face is telling me the close to real life version of Bray Wyatt we saw on SmackDown is going to be overpowered by that mask thing and then play it off against his former characters. Husky Harris, the OG Bray Wyatt, Funhouse Bray, The Fiend, all of them. Bray's first feud back, in my opinion, having seen that mask at Extreme Rules, then the way the mask overpowered the normal Bray on SmackDown. Don't know what I'm doing that for for SmackDown. The normal Bray on SmackDown is just going to be him feuding with himself. That made sense in my head. I can't wait to see which way they're going to go with it. But that was it for all your WTF moments from Extreme Rules 2022. Let me know how many I missed in the comments down below. Of course we know. That's none of them because I'm a sad prick who watches these shows a little bit too hard. If you're feeling fruity, give this video a like. If you're feeling saucy like Dominic Mysterio with Weir Ripley and a strap on up his arse, give it a share, why don't you? <laughs> I love you so I do. And if just interact with it, basically, we need that to survive. Thank you for watching. Bye.